Hello and welcome to this section on the origin of language. So what is the origin of language? How did language come into being? How did the human species develop over time so that we, and not our closest relatives, the chimpanzees, became capable of using language? Well, no other natural communication system is like human language. We can talk about the past, the future, ethics, philosophy, linguistics, fairy tales, we gossip, and a lot of things. Language can also be used not just to convey information, but to also ask for it and give orders or to marry people. And unlike any other animal communication system, it contains an expression for negation, what is not the case. But animal communication systems, on the other hand, typically have at most a few dozen distinct calls, and they're used only to communicate immediate issues such as food, danger, threat, or reconciliation. We don't know how language originated, but we suspect that some type of spoken language must have developed between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago well before written language, which was developed about 5,000 years ago. Yet, among the traces of earlier periods of life on Earth, we never find any evidence relating to the speech of our ancestors that might tell us how language was... So perhaps because of this lack of evidence, there has been no shortage of speculation about the origins of human speech. So these speculations were so rampant 150 years ago that in 1866 the French Academy banned papers on the origins of language. Now, spoken languages don't leave fossils. Well, we have found lots of fossil skulls, but they only tell us the overall shape and size of hominid brains, not what the brains could do. Well, the, the only definitive evidence that we have is the shape of the vocal tract the mouth, tongue, and throat. So until anatomically modern humans, that is about 100,000 years ago, the shape of hominid vocal tracts didn't allow the modern range of speech sounds. That doesn't mean that language necessarily began then. So we are going to talk about all these speculations and theories about the origin of language. Here is the list. God-given speculation, social interaction theory or yo-he-ho theory, the natural sound theory, bow wow, the physical adaptation theory, the tool-making source and the genetic source. So let's start with the divine source, religion. So in most religions, there appears to be a divine source who provides humans with language. An easy answer to a complicated question, right? In the Bible, God created Adam, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name. And I guess you know about the famous story of the Tower of Babel, or Babel. So apparently, this is how it goes in the Bible. The whole world had one language and a common form of speech. So they said, let us build for ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens. But the Lord said, if they have begun to do this as one people speaking the same language, then nothing they devise will be beyond them. So come, let us go down and confound their language so they will not understand one another's speech. And that is why, according to the Bible, we have different languages. In Hinduism, language came from Sarasvati, wife of Brahma, the creator of the universe. In Islam, God taught Adam the speech. So you see the pattern. Now, second one is the natural sound, or yo hey ho theory, that language began as rhythmic chants, perhaps ultimately from the grunts of heavy work, just like workers and sailors who coordinate their movements by saying yo heave ho The idea is that the sounds of a person involved in physical effort could be the source of our language. Well, especially when that physical effort involved several people and the interaction had to be coordinated right so a group of early humans our ancestors might have developed a set of hums grunts groans and curses well especially curses i guess that were used when they were lifting and carrying large and heavy bits of trees and animals then human sounds however they were produced must have had some 
principled use within the life and social interactions of early human groups. The question is, apes and other primates also live in social groups and use grunts and social calls, I'm not sure about curses, but they do not seem to have developed the capacity for a speech. Another interesting view is the natural sound theory. So the basic idea is that prim primitive words could have been imitations of the natural sounds which early men and women heard around them. This type of view has been called the Bow Wow theory of language origin. Words that sound similar to the noises they describe are examples of onomatopoeia. Yeah, that's a very difficult word to pronounce. While it is true that a number of words in any language are onomatopoeic, it is hard to see how most of the soundless things, as well as abstract concepts in our world, could have been referred to in a language that simply echoed natural sounds, such as boom, bang, cuckoo, what else? Splash. Now, instead of looking at types of sounds the, as the source of human speech, we can look at the types of physical features that we have, especially those that are distinct from other animals, which may have been able to support speech production. So we can start with this observation, that at some early stage, our ancestors made a very significant transition to an upright posture with bipedal locomotion, that is, on two feet, and a revised role for the front limbs, like hands, teeth, and other things. So in the study of evolutionary development, there are certain physical features um, best thought of as partial adaptations which appear to be relevant for speech. Now these features do not necessarily lead to speech productions. So you cannot say that just because of these teeth we are able to speak, but they are good clues that a creature having such features probably has the capacity for speech. Now, let's take a look at these features. So, humans uh, have teeth, right? Human teeth are upright, not a slanting outwards like those of apes, and they're roughly even in height. Such characteristics are not very useful for ripping or tearing food and seem better adapted for grinding and chewing. They're also very helpful in making sounds such as f or v. Human lips have much more intricate muscle than is found in other primates, and their flexibility then helps in making sounds such as p and b. The human mouth is relatively small compared to other primates. It can be opened and closed rapidly, and it contains a smaller, thicker, and more muscular tongue, which can be used to shape a wide variety of sounds um, inside the oral cavity, that is the mouth. In addition, unlike other primates, humans can close off the airway through the nose to create more air pressure in the mouth. Now, an interesting part is the human larynx, or voice box, which contains the vocal folds. It differs significantly in position from the larynx of other primates, such as monkeys. Now, in the course of human physical development, the assumption of an upright posture moved the head more directly above the spinal column, and the larynx dropped to a lower position. So this created a longer cavity called the pharynx above the vocal cords, which acts as a resonator for increased range and clarity of the sounds produced via the larynx and the vocal tract. Unfortunately, there was a consequence. So one unfortunate consequence of this development is that the lower position of the human larynx makes it much more possible for the human to choke on pieces of food or other things. Monkeys may not be able to use their larynx to produce a speech sound, but they do not suffer from the problem of getting food stuck in their windpipe. So we can say that in evolutionary terms, there must have been a big advantage in getting this extra vocal power to outweigh the potential disadvantage from an increased risk of choking to death.
Another view is the physical adaptation view. So in this view, one function, which is producing speech sounds, must have been imposed on existing anatomical features, which were previously used for other purposes, like chewing or tearing, you know. A similar development is believed to have taken place with human hands, and some believe that manual gestures may have been a precursor of language. So, about two million years ago, there is evidence that humans had developed preferential right-handedness and had become capable of making stone tools, wood tools, and composite tools eventually followed. Now, the human brain is not only large relative to human body size, it is also lateralized. That is, it has specialized functions in each of the two hemispheres. So these functions that control the motor movements involved in complex vocalizations like speaking and object manipulation, making or using tools, are very close to each other in the left hemisphere of the brain. So maybe there was an evolutionary connection between the language using and the tool using abilities of humans and that both were involved in the development of, um, of speech. One tantalizing source of evidence has emerged recently. So a mutation in a gene called FOXP2 has been shown to lead to deficits in language as well as in control of the face and mouth. This gene is involved in neural mechanisms mediating the development of speech and language. So it is a slightly altered version of a gene found in apes, and it seems to have achieved its present form between 200,000 and 100,000 years ago. It is very tempting to call FOXP2 a language gene, but almost everyone regards this as oversimplified. Are individuals afflicted with this mutation really language impaired or do they just have trouble speaking? Well, we don't have answers yet. Now, besides these speculations, hypotheses and theories, there are also some others, such as poo-poo theory. So, it's a theory that language originated in interjections, which gradually acquired meaning, like the automatic vocal responses to pain or fear or other emotions, the words such as ouch, ew, and these things. Tata theory, so the idea that a speech came from the use of tongue and mouth gestures to mimic manual gestures, for example, saying tata is like waving goodbye with your tongue, or is it? The Lala theory, Lala, like Lala Land, huh? the idea that a speech emerged from the sounds of love, poetic sensibility, and songs. Yeah. But one interesting hypothesis is called putting down the baby hypothesis. Not a fancy scientific name, but it is proposed that language arose from humming or singing intended to maintain infant mother attachments and that mothers would have profited from putting down their infants in order to make their hands free for other activities. So people had begun to be bipedal, and they had to carry their babies while mothers did at the time. Then they had to put down the baby to do some other activities, but still they wanted to maintain the connection with the babies to just um, reassure them that they're around for their safety and security. So they started to make some sounds and that is supposed to be the origin of language. Well, we have covered almost all important theories and speculations about the origin of language. As you can see, there is no definitive answer to the question. Still remains open to lots of more speculations. But hopefully, 